Welcome to another edition, filmed on a Saturday morning, of Anglican Unscripted, episode 226. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today's April 30th, 2016. Okay, I've been traveling a lot, so we didn't get to film during the week. Uh, last weekend, I was in California for the Anakin Men's Weekend. It's a great conference held every year. Uh, you should consider going. Google Anglican Men's Weekend. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I take my son, Ben, and our, our first thing to do is, after we land at the airport at LAX, is run to In-N-Out Burger. Um, it's, it's nothing like it. That's what you go to the West Coast for. Um, and commence weekend is a bonus to in and out Burger. Uh, then Thursday, I was at the consecration of Ronald Jackson, the new uh, Bishop of the Diocese of the Great Lakes. Uh, it was held in Akron, Ohio, in a uh, Roman Catholic church that had a, uh, a, a 1950s sound system, but I, I think I was able, able to overcome that. Uh, the video should be up sometime this afternoon, and I hope you get to watch that. Uh, George, what have you been up to this week? Well, today I've already had one service. I've got uh, three more services so over the weekend, plus a lecture, plus an interfaith service. Because uh-huh. tomorrow is Holocaust Sunday, and uh, right. our local and I, you know, Kevin and I were discussing this. Do I include the Holocaust service on my weekend uh, report? And because half the people are Jews, Kevin says I'm not allowed to because we're not going to have Holy Communion. Yeah, and I have- just think that's unfair. It wrecks my numbers. And you know, Kevin, numbers are what drives rectors. Yes. Well, I, I'm like, here, here's how it works. If you do a Eucharist at a Jewish service, you get the week off. That, that's, that's a bonus. If you bring water and turn it into wine and perform a Eucharist at a Jewish service, you get the year off. Free paid well, vacation. That, well, you know, you know at, at the at the uh, at the reception afterwards, there will be Manischewitz wine and matzah crackers. Does that so, count, Kevin? I, or I, I apologize. I, no, no. no, okay. So I, I I did want to mention in my travels, I've been meeting a lot of seminarians, and uh, out in California, uh, here in, uh, in Akron, and other places, and I want to assure people. Uh, that uh, our future, as far as seminarians and, and future priests, is pretty safe. I, I met a lot of people willing to engage in tough topics. Um, they don't know anything about climate change. They don't know anything about the the uh, uh, ISO politics of the day, but they know everything about uh, you know the New Testament, the Old Testament, and the application of the church. I'm like, wow. But, but, but Kevin. Yes. <laughs> now, I know, I, well, I speak from an Episcopal perspective, of course, but don't they know anything about bathrooms? Um, uh, because, you know, I mean, it, you know, the, the Episcopal bishops, all four of them in North Carolina, put out this statement about the most important issue of the day is whether or not uh, men can use ladies' rooms or ladies can use men's rooms mm-hmm. or whatever it is. And that is the issue of the 21st century. And you're telling me that seminarians at Trinity Seminary are not studying toilet training? Well, it's interesting. Um, we're going to have to watch what happens... Uh, at the next general convention, do you remember? You know, you remember. You've been at the last uh, four or five uh, general conventions. Seven. 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 <laughs> Is there any fate worse than that? Um, you've been at the yes, last number eight. <laughs> number eight, <laughs> which is going to be in Austin, Texas. You'll enjoy it. There's always been a transgender bathroom, and I my first uh, assignment to you was always find the transgendered bathroom and take a picture. Well, if yeah, they're going to. Jeff Walton of the IRD has beaten me to that for the last know. three, okay? So maybe I'll beat him this time around to find the, the yeah. transgender bathroom in no, Austin, Texas. I bet you won't. I bet there won't be a transgender bathroom, that there'll be a policy that the uh, women can use men's bathroom and men can use women's bathroom, as God intended. A few in times I've been to Texas, they don't actually say men. It's like heifers and steers. <laughs> heifers or and uh, steers. I, so. I don't. I, I, I predict that your last general convention was the last time you'll find a, uh, a, a pen scribble transgendered bathroom uh, on the wall somewhere, uh, that all bathrooms must be shared, um, and uh, that's just the way it's going to be, based on what we learned in North Carolina. Uh, what did the bishop say? 
Oh, the bishops, uh, the state of North Carolina, as, as most of our viewers know, passed a law uh, saying that uh, having single-sex bathrooms is not gender discrimination. It's not a discrimination. It's the way life should be. And the Episcopal Church and all the various uh, fellow travelers and uh, uh, liberal elites have denounced North Carolina for being... Uh, you know, Bruce, for instance, Bruce Springsteen has canceled a, con- canceled a concert in North Carolina over there not having transgender bathroom laws in the state. Well, you know, I got sort of tired of Bruce Gender about 1981, 82. Uh, Bruce, Bruce Gender, Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> well, that Gen- is a gender. That, that gender. is a no, no. That is a Freudian slip. Bruce Jenner, Bruce Springsteen. It's Got a it. Freudian slip, Kevin. I, hey, man, this is clever stuff. We, that's why we rule, you know. Well, no, I mean, I mean, my, it, you know, my mother's a psychologist, as you know, and uh, if she watches this, uh, she's going to go to town on that one. Uh, Bruce Jenner, uh, Bruce, Bruce Jenner. What's going on here? Um, so they decided uh, the bishops that. Uh, the governor and the state uh, legislature was wrong and that anybody should use anybody's bathroom. Now, last week I, I discussed with you my self-identity issue and you said self-identity is a fallacy. But I woke up one day and I identified as a millionaire. Well, that's not true. I identified as a multimillionaire. And I went to my bank, Bank of America here in Milford, and I wanted access to my millions of dollars. And they explained to me it doesn't work that way, that I can't self-identify as a, a millionaire. And I want to propose some laws here in Connecticut where we have transgender bathrooms and we have multi-millionaire ATM machines just for people like me who, who self-identify, where I can get a special card from the state that says I am a self-identified multi-millionaire and I can go to these special ATMs and get my... I can see the problem here. Okay, self-identity is a fallacy, George. You were right. Well, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about some of the national news. Um, out there, um, we talked a little bit about the, the two Lusakas. Uh, Justin Welby came back from the ACC meeting and said, listen, the primates gathering should be very pleased because when I went into Lusaka, I was a little worried that tech would not uh, um, uh, play ball, that they might actually do some leadership roles and vote uh, for doctrine and, and other things in, in the ACC. But I'm here to assure you they didn't, that the, the desire of the primates um, was fully realized and that when I flew back from Osaka, I am one happy camper. And he, he kind of uh, doubled down on that statement today, uh, yesterday, George. 29th, he put out a reflection saying that the primates uh, communique has been fully implemented. And the Episcopal Church has also put out statements saying that they participated fully or fully participated. The word fully is really being tossed around here. It's kind of so, like Bill Clinton and what is the word is. Well, we've, we've got uh, two, two different perceptions of reality here. Mm-hmm. Now, what were they? What were, now, let's start with facts. Now, I know in this day and age of gender identity, facts and biology and nature are irrelevant. It's what we perceive the truth to be. But what you and I perceive the truth to be, based on our reading of the English language, the primates communique was Episcopal Church would not, would be present, but would not have voice, would have voice, but not vote, and would not help set doctrine and would not serve on standing committees at these ACC meetings. That's boiled down to what it was, but that was the understanding of the GAFCON primates, was the understanding of Munir Nice of the Global South, Archbishop of the Middle East. And, well, the meeting was held. Munir Nice didn't go because Ian Douglas, Bishop of Connecticut, was going to participate in the Standing Committee meeting, which was contrary to Munir Nice's understanding. And Rwanda, Nigeria, Uganda, and sort of Kenya <laughs> were going to participate because this was contrary to their understandings. The meeting is held. The Episcopal Church participates, in their words, fully, Mm -hmm. to the extent that Ian Douglas put forward, sponsored some of the resolutions that deal with doctrine, polity, and discipline, like an Anglican Congress, I think it was. They voted for the members of the Standing Committee, Chairman and Vice Chairman, and the only thing 
that they didn't do was that Ian Douglas decided not to run for re-election to the Standing Committee. But that's not really a loss for the that wing, because who was elected? The Bishop of Nairobi, the forger. The forger. Uh, you know, the, the guy who got there under false pre- uh, pretenses. Uh, it just shows you what a corrupt organization is, that uh, they doubled down by not electing the Episcopalian uh, with uh, questionable theology, but the, the African with the, with with uh, well, questionable I'll, I'll uh, handwriting. Uh, yes. So, well, let's back up. We also this week got a uh, um, there was a meeting of the Gafcon primates in Nairobi, and they sat down and put together a communique after the meeting. And you and I read the communique when it first came out, and we're like, this is kind of disappointing. We were kind of expecting more of a, a war chant. Um, uh, well, we were, we were expecting something on par with Justin Welby. In other yeah. words, whether we liked it or not, Justin Welby said, the primates, everything they wanted out of the ACC meeting, they got. Now, we know that not to be true, sure. but at least we had a straightforward statement Justin Welby doubled down in two statements, uh, making the statement that uh, he uh, he did everything that he could do, and he did it to the best of his ability, and in fact, he did it perfectly. Mm-hmm. And then Gafcon releases its statement, and I we are not in the Peter Akinola days where uh, <laughs> no, and it, it came out. I mean, they they were clear. Lusaka was uh, disappointing, but not surprising. Uh, they talked about uh, you know some of the structures of Gafcon and stuff like that. They elected a new, new leader. Archbishop Akinola is the new leader uh, now of Gafcon. Oko, Oko, Oko. What did I say? Akinola. <laughs> this is why we can't tape on Saturdays. You know, I haven't finished my coffee yet. My my apologies. Uh, Archbishop Oko is the, the new uh, uh, leader of Gafcon, and so um, I expressed this to um, some people in the Gafcon movement in semi leadership roles. I said, you know, this statement was kind of not what we're expecting, and that word got out. And I heard back from some people who were at the meeting who said, don't look for everything to be in the communique. We're actually communicating privately with Justin, but not just with Justin, we were so well received um, in Canterbury by all the primates who were very interested in what's happening. Our communication is kind of carbon, carbon copy, all the primates. Uh, it's just I, I, done. I think for probably. our viewers, yeah. what we need to do is we need to, the mistake I made yeah. was that I framed this GAFCON meeting in an American perspective. Absolutely. Westernized. Now, and, and an American perspective, a Western perspective, is a business perspective, meaning meeting of heads of state, meeting of key leaders. They've already come to a decision before they've had the meeting, or they're going to come to a decision at the meeting. So when you have this meeting, that is when action takes place. It's a formality. All the discussion, it's a formality. All the discussion takes place before the meeting it even occurs. The meeting is there to sign on the dotted line and go. That's the American way. It's not the African way. The African way is to go and discuss and think and strategize and come to a consensus. And consensus is not 50% plus one. So what they have done publicly is they've listed all the good things that are happening. They're getting involved. They are slowly creating a communion with a communion, with interactions, with education, with clergy training. Um, they've welcomed on board a new province. Tanzania is fully on board of uh, the GAFCOM movement again. Mm-hmm. And th- but what they didn't say was that we are now waiting for Justin Welby to put together this team that he's promised, and we'll see if he is to be trusted or believed. Right. Lusaka. Because we're not going to allow Lusaka right. to be driving our agenda. We're right. driving the agenda, not them. Lusaka was not the end game. Uh, this whole three year uh, time to sit back and watch what the Episcopal Church does and how the Anglican Communion works with it is the end game, and that includes the task force. And so, you know, our Western eyes are like, look at Lusaka. Tech is doing the same old thing. Justin Welby's doing the same old thing. It's all failed. Gaffin's like, you need to look at the bigger picture. You silly Anglican unscripted press, and, and, and we 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 take that. That's us, you know. Well, let, let, 
let's sort of, uh, I'll try to conceptualize this for people so they sort of, well, this is where I think we are today. The Episcopal Church came out of Lusaka a winner because mm -hmm. they had a clear strategy, a clear agenda. They needed not to be excluded. They needed to be seen to be participating, and they achieved all that. They got a trophy. How, they got a trophy, a participation trophy. Mm -hmm. What they didn't uh, get was the election of another Tenga Tenga. Tenga Tenga was the former chairman who was in the pocket of the Episcopal Church. He was on the staff of the Episcopal Church seminaries and so on and so forth. Before he came, went out to uh, Lusaka, he performed a same-sex marriage in Palm Springs or Palm Desert, California, for goodness wow. sakes. Not many African bishops will do that. No. <laughs> uh, the, new, the new chairman of the ACC, uh, they did not elect the Brazilian. Instead, they elected the Archbishop of Hong Kong. Correct. Now, the Archbishop of Hong Kong is in somebody's pocket, but it's not the Episcopal Church's. The Archbishop of Hong Kong is in the pocket of the government in Peking. Uh, he's a, he is a uh, he has spoken out and denounced the pro democracy protests. He is den he is denied that the Chinese government is cracking down on religion, and he is a company man. He's trying to find a way to meld uh, the desires of the Communist Party leadership with the Christian faith to make it acceptable to both sides. He's the company man par excellence, and the company he is in, belongs to is Justin Welby's and the Communist Party, but yes, you can, yeah. too far there. <laughs> so they didn't get that guy. And Adaiwu Ferron, Josiah Adaiwu Ferron, who started out with such promise, because initially the left hated his guts, because mm -hmm. he was a Nigerian bishop who uh, they thought was anti-gay rights and this and that, and then a Daiwu Ferron crawled and said, no, I'm not. It's all been a mistake and this and that. And now he's gone. We've, we've had reports, which I've not been able to confirm, but at a meeting of Mission Society leaders at Lambeth Palace, a Daiwu Ferron made some very harsh and derogatory comments about the GAFCON movement. A Daiwu Ferron has called the leaders of the GAFCON movement fools, knaves, and liars. I thought he said Christ was not in GAFCON. Well... Is that I was there? That, that's, that's unconfirmed. unconfirmed. And yes. Kevin, that would be a, that would be a scurrilous <laughs> no. rumor if it if if it were not happened to be true. Which okay, probably it. I've heard uh, through a friend, through a friend, through a friend that he may have said Christ is not in Gafcon. Uh, well, let's just stick with he made derogatory comments. <laughs> okay. We can we can defend that to death. Um, but but a Daiwu Ferron has now hung his, uh, he, is a, he is a Welby loyalist mm -hmm. because he has no support amongst the GAFCON or Africans. He's got no support among the Episcopalians. And now he's packing you know, the ACC as to be a, an agency loyal to Justin Welby. Mm -hmm. So what are the GAFCON primates are doing? They're stepping back and saying, look, we don't want to wrestle with the ACC. It's irrelevant. Whatever they did has of no consequence in the great scheme of things. So, which is George a, fact, to a have very a, factual statement uh, for the last you know twenty years. See, but see, what I wanted was I wanted a, I, I wanted Gafcon to come out swinging and saying all these strong statements about the ACC when the die were thrown and this and that. Mm -hmm. But the but the Gafcon leadership is sort of pick, stepping above and say, look, I'm, we're not going to get involved in this. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that occurred there is of any consequence to us. The deal right now is, is Justin Welby going to honor his promise about this committee? And from what we've heard, from what I've heard, none of the GAFCON people know who's on this committee that's going to investigate the Episcopal Church. Now, I have heard that Frank Griswold... Oh, yeah, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, Frank Griswold uh, was Catherine he, busy. I, what do you mean? Uh, she's Frank's. got a teaching gig lined up. But, okay. you know, Frank is up in his retirement, and maybe he'll join the committee to come out and help out. Or I, I know Spong's not doing much nowadays. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, Gene Robinson's not a bishop uh, in New Hampshire. There's lots of people free to be on the task force. You're right. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to follow that. We just hit the 19-minute uh, mark. Uh, for those who have not fallen asleep yet, uh, let's close the show out. I'm Kevin Carlson. 
<laughs> and I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 226 of Anglican Unscripted.